All Ford GTs start as a basic aluminum chassis produced in Detroit, Michigan. Take a close look at those robotic arms. They are the last ones you'll see in the hand-assembled construction process of a Ford GT. The completed chassis is sent to Mayflower Vehicle Systems in Norwalk, Ohio. The chassis returns from Mayflower Vehicle Systems to Celine Special Vehicles in Troy, Michigan as a body in white. The body in white consists of the chassis wearing doors, front fenders, and a rear hatch. It will spend the next three days in the paint process. After an inspection to search for any imperfections, the body is disassembled for masking. The body panel's black color comes from an electro-coating process. This involves charging the body panels with negative ions so that the positively charged paint will better adhere to them. The body is placed on a roller cart and washed with reverse osmosis high-pressure water before it is heat treated at 240 degrees. Then it's vacuumed to remove any remaining water and wiped down with a cleaning solvent to make the surface ready for the first coat of primer. Each body gets one layer of primer, two layers of base color, and three layers of clear coat. The thickness and viscosity of the paint is adjusted for each color. For instance, the yellow and white paint is thicker than the black or dark blue shades. The primer is washed and then baked onto the body panels at between 260 and 280 degrees. After an inspection of the body panels at the primer stage, the base coats and clear coats are applied. Between each coat, there is a 5 to 15 minute wait to allow the paint to settle. Paint masking is also checked throughout the process to protect the interior body panels and silver chassis from unwanted overspray. After the primer coats, and again after the base and clear coats, the body panels are inspected for flaws and defects in a well-lit booth. Some defects that might be hard to see at the black electrocoated inspection stage will turn up here and are immediately addressed. Cars getting the optional stripe kit are masked for painting. This is a lower bake process that occurs when the non-aluminum body panels are painted, such as the hood and the front and rear fascias. The low bake paint booths are used for all of these items with the temperature set at 180 degrees. The polish area is the last stage in the paint process. All panels are hand polished and any minor imperfections that don't require repainting are addressed here. Examples would include a small speck of dirt in the paint that can be rubbed out. Final paint inspection also occurs here. This is the first in a total of 22 assembly stations. The doors are removed for a separate door build-up process, and the sound deadening material is installed. This is also when the main wiring harness is installed along the frame tunnel. Additional wiring harnesses are now installed, along with the accelerator pedal and initial brake and steering system components. Multiple stations are used to install the steering and brake components because of the tight spaces involved. If all of these parts were installed at one assembly station, the line workers would be constantly banging into each other. The instrument panel and clutch and brake pedals are installed next. The car is officially vinned at this point, meaning the VIN plate is attached. A sort of instrument panel hoist is used to lift and install the IP at this stage, and additional power steering lines and air conditioning components go in as well. Cooling and climate control lines are installed next. The fuel tank, steering column, and seat belts are also installed. As with any assembly line procedure, it's crucial to have an adequate supply of the proper components ready and waiting at each stage of production. The front and rear suspensions are made up of sub-assembly components. These smaller components are assembled before they are bolted to the vehicle at this stage. Sub-assemblies are required for items that are too complex to build on the main assembly line. A four-wheel alignment that actually measures wheel angle throughout the movement of the suspension is performed. This ensures that each wheel stays within spec at speeds up to 150 miles per hour. The alignment machine is also connected to the Wixom plant where the GT's final assembly takes place. The final brake components are installed, including the rotors and calipers. Then the brake system is checked with a high-pressure vacuum tool to see if there are any leaks. At this point, the car's chassis assembly is officially completed. The doors that were pulled at the beginning of the chassis assembly are built using a separate process. The window and window regulators are installed, along with the wiring harness and door release switch. The doors initially took three days to build. Now it's down to one hour. From the speaker to the window switch to the electric door release, each is tested before the door ever goes on the car. The window regulators are also timed to see how long they take to raise and lower. If any component is not to spec, it is immediately replaced. Here is where the body line portion of the assembly process begins. The first step is installation of the windshield and mid-light glass, which is the glass between the cabin and engine compartment. Latches for the engine cover are also installed, as is the pressurized overflow coolant bottle. The doors and fenders are officially attached to the body now. As with the doors, several components go through a sub-assembly process before being attached to the main body. Other sub-assembly items include the front and rear fascias, the engine cover, and the wheels and tires. The rocker panels and quarter panels go on next. The side splitters are installed, 
which act as air deflectors to provide the Ford GT with downforce at high speeds. The front and rear fascias are also installed, as are the hood and headlights. Here's where the final product starts to really take shape. The rear hatch and associated weather stripping, along with the secondary door seals and the quarter panels, are locked into position. Panel gaps are confirmed before the side scoops are installed using a combination of plastic and metal fasteners. The door panels, sound system amplifier, and the switches for the door locks and windows go in next. Tweeters are installed in cars with the upgraded sound system, which means an extra hole must be cut in the door panel. Wiper blades and arms, along with the wheels and tires, are also installed. The sub-assembly for the rear hatch includes the installation of a heated glass window and several pieces of cooling ductwork. The ductwork is necessary because the large belly pan used to generate high-speed downforce on the Ford GT greatly reduces airflow in the engine compartment. The final stage at the Troy plant involves a thorough inspection of the vehicle. Everything from panel gaps to paint flaws is checked before the car is prepped for transportation. The car is then loaded into a truck and taken on a 25-minute ride to the Wixom plant for final assembly. The Ford GT, minus engine, seats, and most of the interior, arrives at Wixom. These components are installed, and all final Ford GT testing occurs at the same plant where the Lincoln LS is produced. The car is received at Wixom and an incoming quality check is performed. The car is also entered into a computerized system that tracks the vehicle to ensure all final test procedures are performed. This system will not allow a car to ship until it's been cleared of all quality control issues and processes. The rear body panels and wheels are removed before it starts down the Wixom line to ease installation of the drivetrain. A cart designed specifically to hold the rear body panels and wheels ensures that nothing is scratched or damaged during this process. The engine is hand assembled at the Romeo engine plant, which is the same plant that will build the upcoming GT500 engine. The drivetrain must have radiator hoses, brackets, a starter, shifter cables, exhaust shields, and motor mounts installed before it goes into the Ford GT. Prep time per engine is about 20 minutes. A build team is assigned to each Ford GT engine, and this team etches the drivetrain with a serial number and signature plate. Additionally, each car is assigned a two-man team at Wixom, and they stay with it from start to finish during the two-day final assembly and testing process. A hoist is used to lower the 900-pound drivetrain into each Ford GT engine. The half shafts and other engine systems are hooked up once the engine is in place, with a total drivetrain installation time of approximately 30 minutes per vehicle. With the drivetrain in place, the rear body panels, along with the tires and wheels, are reinstalled and the engine fluids are added. Next come the final interior components, including seats and interior trim. Headlight alignment is also confirmed, at which point the car is considered fully assembled. Now comes the testing regimen for each completed Ford GT. While only one of every nine cars assembled daily at Wixom is taken on a 25-mile test drive, every GT is placed on a dyno for various engine checks and testing. After the drivetrain shakedown, the body is subjected to a rattle and shake test. This consists of offset bumps, followed by a cobblestone and heavily ridged section of road. Plant managers indicated that fewer than one in 100 cars has to go back to address rattles after this test. A four-wheel dynamic alignment, just like the one performed at Celine Special Vehicles in Troy, is repeated at the Wixom plant, this time with all four wheels and tires in place. The measurements are checked against the first alignment figures to confirm that each setting is still to spec. The Ford GT uses a smooth belly pan to assist high-speed aerodynamics. Before the pan is installed, the technicians give each car a final and thorough underbody inspection. After this, the belly pan is bolted on, ready to create downforce at speeds up to and beyond 200 miles per hour. Next comes the water test, with dozens of high-pressure nozzles aimed at specific points on the car where leaks are most likely. Despite the extreme nature of this test, virtually none of the 1600 GTs produced so far have shown any sign of water intrusion. The side stripes are the final component added to the Ford GT. Unlike the longitudinal stripe over the top, the side stripe is made up of vinyl tape rather than paint. To help the tape stick to the painted surface, the lower sides of the car are heated up before the side stripes are installed. The final stage at Wixom involves a very thorough inspection under bright lights. If a car requires a repair that can't be addressed here, it's sent back to the appropriate stage to be fixed. If it passes inspection, it's moved into the final staging area to await shipping. The completed four GTs are stored at the Wixom plant until they can be shipped to their final destination. A limited run of approximately 4,200 GTs will be built for the 2005 and 2006 model years. And perhaps, if you're very fortunate, one of them may be on its way to a dealer near you.